Let's get started. Welcome to the talk tonight. We are going to do a little bit different version of our health talk than what we do for chiropractic. We're going to take it all the way down to the cellular level. Ready? Yes. Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. Let's do this. So we're going to start with the cell. Now, all of you take biology? Yes. Yeah? You remember everything? <laughs> no? How about you? In the back. You remember everything? Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to draw a cell starting right here. How's that, Louis? Yeah. Cell? Absolutely. Good place to start. What parts of the cell? The cell wall. That would be good if we were plants, but we are not. So the that's cell, cell membrane. Cell membrane. Very good. All right, on the cell membrane. The cell membrane is made of mostly fat. It's very, very fluid, very, very wavy, very, very. Uh, flexible, it moves around a lot, it's made of mostly fat, and has all these little islands all over. Remember, this is like a ball, three-dimensional. So on this ball, you'll see all these different receptors. These here are not hairs, it's not a head. These are hormone receptors for different hormones. We like hormones? Mm -hmm. Everybody say, yep. yes, we yes. like hormones. What are some of your favorite hormones? Estrogen. Estrogen's your favorite? Um, okay. Hey. <laughs> Any others? Cortisol. Cortisol is your favorite? Cortisol, testosterone, insulin, thyroid, insulin. Yeah, there's all sorts of 400 different hormones. They all kind of work the same way. They pull around through your system. They come in and they dock on these hormone receptors and they pass their information in and out. That's how they communicate with the cell. Kind of like a boat that we were just talking about earlier. Flip, docks in, people can get on and off, something like that. And there's also structures inside the cell. What are some of the structures you remember inside the cell? Not all at once, I really feel overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, how about we do we have we have the nucleus? Remember that? What's inside the nucleus? Yeah, I told you it's a refresher. We're going real way back, right? Junior high, high school. Yeah. DNA, that's where your chromosomes are. Right, that's where our genetic code is in there. A lot of people have learned through biology that's the brain of the cell. But what we learned through different experiments is what they did, they go in a cell, they take that brain out, what, what should happen to it? And so when I took it out, what would happen to that cell? It would die. It would die. If I took your brain out, probably die. Same thing. But it doesn't happen to the cell. You can take that right out, the cell will keep going. Keep eating, keep doing its thing, keep away, moving away from things it doesn't like, moving towards things it does. Only thing it can do now is divide. It can't replicate. So if anything, that nucleus in there is not the brain of the cell, it's the gonads of the cell. It helps it reproduce. But you know, men in science have been confusing those two concepts for a long time. <laughs> we have some other structures inside there. We have something called a mitochondria. I'm back to you. Mitochondria makes energy in the form of ATP. That's our currency. That is the life money of your cell. You use that for every transaction you have in your body, from enzymes to vitamins to minerals to any kind of activity, you use the ATP. And this is not just cappuccino energy like everyone likes to enjoy here in this fine state of Washington. This is life energy. This is the kind of energy that you don't have it. It's not a choice whether you want to do something or not. You don't got the juice. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's, not, it's a deep kind of fatigue type energy, life energy. So that's a big deal in there. Cell also, just like us, eats, so it gets good stuff from the outside in, and also gets rid of bad stuff that goes up on the inside. And that's pretty much how a cell looks and how it functions. Now, our question here is, how many cells look like this? What do you think? We have 70 trillion of them here. What, how many of them are built like this? All of them. Yeah, because remember, we came from two half cells that came together to make one cell. Don't get too excited, it's a different talk. So you get the concept, and then it divided, divided, divided. They tell two friends, and they tell two friends. And so we got a whole body. So we're all made up of this, in kind of the same way. It doesn't matter if it's a brain cell, liver cell, skin cell, toenail cell. They all kind of do the same thing right here. Right? This is how it functions. And then the different, uh, different activities in life, we'll say, we'll call them stress. Uh, we, this will start to create a different reactions. Can you name some stresses in your life? Family, My husband. Yeah. <laughs> Work, children, children, money, time, 
they're pretty much all similar. What happens is when we start to confront these different stresses, these different obstacles, these different events in our life, it creates a reaction in our body. And usually what's created is a little molecule right here. This molecule is very unique because it's got a positive unpaired electron up there. The body doesn't like positive charges. It likes negative or neutral. So that guy's not good. And this guy is called a free Radical. It sounds like a cool name. Free yes. radical. Right? Free radical. <laughs> yeah, free radical. No, they're bad. The bad look. The unfair electron up there goes around, and everything it touches on your in your body, every cell it touches, it starts to break it down. It goes through your body, floats through it, pings the cell, ping, 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 hits the cell, and little pieces come off, and it creates a process called oxidation. Now, ever hear of oxidation before? What, happened, what is it called when it's on your car? Oxidation? Yeah, it's called bu bubbles in the paint. It's rust. It starts to break down the, the car. And same thing in your body. When this oxidation process starts to go on, I'm going to use some of your special paint. Let's see how they work. Oh, you have to use them yet? All right. Oh. Look at that. When oxidation starts to go on, it starts to go all over the cell. The cell, just like on, your, on, on the metal on your car, gets rigid starts to break down that flexibility we talked about isn't there it starts to cause what's called see that one huh it's really hard to see that one it's really hard to see it well, you guys only have a bunch of girl code in there you couldn't get a nice strong red how about brown brown? brown is the color of rust all right <laughs> as you wish there we go this is the oxidation this is what leads to inflammation cellular inflammation now all the while this free radical is pinging creating all sorts of different debris coming off of a cell. Now look, I like to think of myself as the king of my castle. And so in the morning when I go to my window, I'm drinking my medieval coffee, I look out on my land and I have my castle wall out there. If I see a couple of rogue peasants, peasants who are real upset with me with a hammer and a chisel going at my wall, do you think I'm gonna to be too upset? Not too much, not with one or two, I've got a big castle. You know, I'm a king here. No, but now the next day I wake up and go to the same window and I got 10,000 people out there all. What do you think I got to do now? No, I got to wake up the queen. So we got to do work, right? You know, the boss needs to come out. And that's what happens. So that's a problem. So the more of this you got going on, the more the inflammation starts to go. And as it builds up, it starts to affect the cell. Remember those hormone receptors? They get blunted. They don't work so well. Now suddenly all these hormones got to come in and they're fighting for those slips. You know, a boat docking a slip is one thing, but we got three boats fighting over one. Just think of those those arguments you see in the parking lot at, at these these crazy stores. These, you know, they get crazy. Same thing happens. They start to, they start to have a problem, and they become hormonally resistant. Now, it just depends on what hormone is what we're looking. What well, insulin resistance is one that everyone knows. Have you heard of insulin resistance? Yeah. yeah. What is that called? When it gets bad. Diabetes. Diabetes, exactly. Insulin resistance means it comes in and can't get in. The cells become resistant for different reasons, all different reasons, a lot of them. You can't get in, can't transmit this information. Now we have insulin resistance, right? If it was estrogen, we'd have estrogen resistance. It's thyroid, it's called hypothyroid. If it was testosterone, they call it low T. That's going all over crazy. That's hitting men like crazy. We have, men have about a third of the testosterone that their grandfathers or their lineage had three generations ago. That's pretty significant. This yeah. similar process is going on. So it keeps going, it keeps going. Eventually this good stuff, the food, can't get in. So, it's, so it starts to get malnourished. And then the bad stuff that needs to get out, can't get out. So it starts to build up on the inside. I don't know about you, it doesn't take long for my bad stuff to not get out before I'm one cranky dude. <laughs> A couple days later, everyone around me is gonna cranky because I piss them all off I'm going nuts. Same thing happens, starts to build up on the inside and next your mitochondria that makes your cellular money, your cellular energy, starts to get better. And when that happens, what do you think happens to our energy? Down, drops dramatically, significantly in there, right there. And then it starts to build up more. Now you start to see it in that nucleus where the DNA is. And this is a big deal because when it starts to really piss off the nucleus and starts to affect these genetic strands in here, that's what triggers disease. <laughs> you think about it, this oxidative process, it's called the reactive oxygen species, comes down here, does this, this is the cause of all chronic degenerative disease. This is what drives the inflammation that leads to everything down the, down the way. There is a genetic component, we all are susceptible to different things, but this is what causes it. 
is what breaks it down. So now look, this is one pissed off cell. You know, everything's out of bounds. We have this free ride, we're going crazy. Anyone here watch TV? No. Of course <laughs> There are people out there who do watch TV. And when they do, they might have seen a commercial by Allstate. Allstate Insurance, and they got that guy Mayhem in that commercial. That's what free ride Goes around breaking everything. Mayhem's the reason we're supposed to have Allstate Insurance. This is Mayhem going crazy. But luckily, there is an anecdote. The anecdote here, I'm going to change colors, not too much risk. Here is another molecule that is just about the exact opposite of this one. Positive and negative, pairs up, and it gets kicked out of the body. This anecdote is called a antioxidant. This, this is the anecdote, so it's an antioxidant. Are those? Mm -hmm. Right? Pretty cool. Got those going. Well, everyone likes those. Where do we find antioxidants? We want them. We like them because they get in here, they, they pair up, and they help neutralize man. Where do we see them? You say? Blueberries. Blueberries. Fruits. Vegetables. Cocoa. Spices. All that kind of stuff. Well-raised, healthy-raised animals also can provide. And they produce antioxidants. One of the biggest ones that we know of. Great big. What's the biggest one of the biggest antioxidants that it seems like everybody talks about? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. You didn't even let me say all my jokes about my mom. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I'll tell you anyway. But yeah, I said everyone knows it, uh, that vitamin C is a pretty good antioxidant. I said even my mom. Even she knew when I was pregnant. She didn't know why, but she did know that she wanted us to have it because we kept a little thing, a little jar of vitamin C on our counter, twenty four seven. And anytime we were leaving, if we were at night or it was cold out. And the darn chewy vitamin orange seeds all my life. So she knew. And the reason this one is such a good antioxidant is to look. It's got five electrons that it can donate to neutralize this process. There's a five to one return. If I said, hey, give me a dollar, I'll give you five, will you take it? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Otherwise, I'm talking the wrong group in here, right? That's a five to one return. Five to one. That's a big deal. All right, and so that's why vitamin C, vitamin D is similar. CoQ10 has a couple of electrons as well. All these different enzymes, nutrients go in, they neutralize these guys, and they start to reverse some of this process. Now, here's a secret. A lot of people know about this. They know about what's in food. They know that you can take vitamins and different supplements, and you can get antioxidants. We know about these, even creams and so forth. But one of the things that people don't talk about, they don't seem to know about, well, now they've got all your pounds. Do you have a black one? Maybe like Darren, just in my pocket. <laughs> in from the inside of your nucleus, where your DNA is, where your genetic strands are, there's a protection mechanism that makes antioxidants. They're called glutathione, GSH, superoxide dismutase, catalase. No, it doesn't matter the name. They're, they're just big, high, powerful antioxidants. Now, vitamin C is a pretty kick butt antioxidant because it's got five to one return. What do you think these guys have? This dog, yes, ten. That'd be twice as good as vitamin C. That would be better. Uh -huh. They have more. Yeah, that would be twenty times as good. They have more. Come on, keep going. Why have you? Five thousand. Five thousand. I'll, I'll just tell you, million. One million. Two comments. Yeah, one million. So that's a million to one return. Now back to my money scenario. If I get, if I said, give me a dollar, I give you a million. Who's not going to jump up and down for that? Right? It's a lottery type of return. And that's what can happen from the inside of your self. They can protect themselves. But here's the key. Just like you can take and you can eat and you can use supplements, you can take these things to help you with these antioxidants. You can't take those. You can't take those. Not what you take here. It's what your body makes that gets and keeps you healthy. That's the key table. You have to figure out, and that's where everything else that we talk about comes in so Important because we're going to do these things to help our body to stimulate our body to make them. You have to have the action. The body has to have the reason to make it. If not, it's like buying all the materials to build a house, going to the lot, dropping your materials onto the lot, and then expecting the house to jump up. It doesn't really work that way. You need to put the effort and action behind it so you can take all these great things, eat these things. Now, trust me, I want these good foods, I want this good stuff coming in. You can take all the raw material you want. If you don't have the action or the lifestyle or the habits behind it, your body's not going to make it. It's not going to build that house. It's not going to build your house. 
So we got this thing going in full swing. Everything is all pissed off, all irritated through here, triggering a decrease in life energy. We've got some inflammation that can create pain, that can, that can lead to disease. We've got disease that can be triggered there in your genetic coding in there. We also have our time clock, our genetic time clocks in here called telomeres. Those guys sit at the end of those genetic strands. Right? No one has regular shoes on here. I do, but like on the end of my shoelace, there's a little cap. Right? What does that cap do for my shoes? It doesn't unwind. It doesn't fray. It doesn't fall apart. Same thing. That's what these telomeres do here. And so they keep those 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 genetic strands together, so that when that cell divides, it doesn't divide and cause a growth, a tumor, develop into something that we don't want. Right? It also is a genetic time clock. When those things get to a certain number, when we run out of a certain one of those, <coughs> it lights off. So the key is how fast are we going through those telomeres? This process speeds that system up. You ever met someone who's had a chronic disease or health issue for a long time, years and years? They never look younger than when they are. They usually look older, move older, sound older, because they literally are. They are accelerating their aging because this process is in full swing because this is what's behind them. With me? Yeah? So now we've got to figure out two things. One is how do we get some more of that? Right? We want that lottery ticket winning health stuff coming out of our cells, and we want to figure out how to stop this. So let's look at what causes it first. Number one factor driving this in our society, in our culture today. You keep an eye on the time. I see you looking at that. Yeah. You want to give me signals and things? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to have to listen. All right, so the number one thing that's driving this negative process is production of free radicals in our system, in our life right now is what we eat. Fuels for your body. One is sugar, one is fat. That's it. That's all your body can use for energy. Sugar or fat, I can't see them. Can we no. see this? Can't? No, uh, use, this, use the brown. Use the brown? Sugar or fat. All right, that's it. That's all we can use. Sometimes we can use protein, but all the pro we do with protein, we break it down to sugar. And then it gets converted into sugar, into glucose. But this is it. And here's the key. Sugar produces 50 times the free radicals to use as energy as fat. 50 times the free radicals as fat. Fat produces all the healing. Remember I said that the cell membrane here, that's the interface which all the hormones, it lets things in, pushes things out. This whole cell membrane is mostly fat. Our organs, our internal organs, our liver, our pancreas, our brain is mostly fat. It's all the kind of fat that we need for healing. Fat burns clean, detoxifies as we go. It's very soothing. It's the healing energy. Whereas sugar produces a ton of free radicals. It burns fast. It burns easily. It's like the difference between a, a wood-burning chimney in your house versus a butane gas range. You see the difference in your mind? One burns clean and long. It's very easy to, to manage. The other one, a lot of smoke, and it needs a lot of supply, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of what's going on. So these are the two main kickers right there that, that can influence this process. The more of this that's going on, the more of this. Inversely, kind of the color. Inversely, what's going on in our diet, the less of this and the more healing it's Pretty interesting, huh? That's step one, step two. Then over here, one of the biggest influences, because this is our cells. Enough cells together make a tissue. Enough tissues together make organs. Our organs make our systems, our systems make our body. And so, as this starts to happen, the next thing that gets affected are, are back to those hormones. The two key player hormones in this scenario are. Cortisol, it's a small board. I'm used to a much bigger board here. Let's go right now. You've heard that before? <laughs> insulin. Cortisol and insulin, those are the two key hormones that drive this process or can help this process. There are over 400 hormones we talked about, and they all interrelate with these, but these are the two major ones because these are the only two hormones that you can have turned on all the time. 
every other hormone that goes on here. Another big one out here is human growth hormone. That's great for staying young and staying healthy. All these things, they're pulsatile. They, they, they whisper, they don't scream at our body. When they come on, they just, they're influencers. They show up and things start to change. Things start to happen. Very subtle and, they, and they're very powerful. But cortisol and insulin, man, we can turn those on 24 seven. And that's not a normal process for our body to be in. Does that make sense? Anytime we have something that's supposed to be there just for a moment, we keep it there constantly, it causes a problem. It causes that hormonal resistance that we're seeing over here. Right? Hormonal resistance. Cortisol, what do we know about cortisol? What do they say about cortisol? They call it belly fat and the hormone. They also call it the stress hormone. This is triggered mainly by stress. These guys are linked together in our body pretty carefully, pretty closely. When one is going turned on, it turns on the other one. They run the racket of systems. Hormones, are, as powerful as they are, they're fragile. They're, they are easily influenced. And depending on who they're hanging out with, they'll change their behavior. It's like my kid on the playground from five years old that our group is with and they change the games they play and how they how they play. Same thing with our hormones, right? Cortisol, when it gets kicked in due to stress and things that can also cause this, it'll bring insulin, it goes up, it brings insulin with it. It causes insulin resistance by making insulin less sensitive. Cortisol is an anti-inflammatory. Anyone ever hear of athletes who get injured and they get an injection of? Yeah, cortisol. Prednisone, cortisol. Yeah, it's the same thing. Prednisone is just synthetic cortisol. And it brings down the inflammation. Why? Because those free radicals cause inflammation. So in a natural balanced system, a little bit of cortisol can help calm it down. But when we're cranking 50 to 1, these free radicals, we're out of whack. It'll keep pumping cortisol. Keep pumping cortisol. Keep pumping cortisol. They add on top of that stress we have, the worries, family, job, all of it, it just adds and snowballs and it starts to throw these guys out of whack. They build on each other and they go and they go and they go. And they go. So they start to get in trouble. Insulin, on the, on the flip side, is when you're eating and we're burning it's just driving insulin up. And that'll affect where so as well. You see it's this big circle that gets pumping through there, pumping through there, pumping through there. And, but there's another thing that makes this whole process worse. Each one is compounded on the other. You see that so far? Here is the key. A lot of this system can be managed. It can be managed pretty well naturally. But there's one determined here that can make all the difference, and that's the state or the tone of the nervous system. The nervous system has two main switches. It's either in sympathetic or stress mode, or it's in parasympathetic or healing. Healing. So up we're here. Parasympathetic. That's healing. Sympathetic. Uh, that's stress. These guys are inversely related. These guys. So when we're stressed out, we're going to pump out the cortisol. We're going to pump out the cortisol. That's the stress hormone. When the stress hormone goes up, it's going to pull insulin with it. Just as a little note, we've talked about belly fat. Insulin is the hormone that directly causes weight gain. Fat gain. It's the only hormone that, is, that can allow weight to come off when you want to. So if you're gaining weight and you don't want to, there's an insulin issue. If you have weight you want to lose, you're doing the normal stuff, but it's not coming off like you may have before, or like you think it should, then there's an insulin issue. If there's an insulin issue, there's also Right? If these guys are involved, you got an imbalance of the nervous system. So you can only be in one state or the other. One is always dominant over the other. So if you're in sympathetic, worked up, stressed out mode, you're signaling this whole chain all the way down. And the opposite of that is to turn on the parasympathetic, quiet, the rest, the relaxation, the eating, the digestion. That's why it activates insulin. And we want to make sure we don't activate too much. By the choices of the fuel we eat, so we keep cranking sugar, and when we're producing the free radicals, we're going to crank insulin and put us off your feet. Right. Following me so far? Too fast, too far? Good? <clears throat> How about you guys? Fine? All right, now, keep it all. Yeah? Too far? <laughs>
worry. Here's here's the key with all. This is a new version. I can version. tell. Yeah, there's my eraser. Right in my <laughs> Eraser? Can you use an eraser? Yep. Oh, I missed my green. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's re can can we just re do a quick recap of where what we have so far? Yeah. <laughs> this is the cells, cells of the body, entire cells of the body. It's all systemic. It doesn't matter what part of the body we're talking about. It affects them all equally. There, this is in full freakout mode because it's. Being Radicals. This comes out of balance with the antioxidants that we're either taking in our diet or making due to our lifestyle. And <laughs> that's out of balance. Cells are going. This is what causes everything that's what you consider a degenerative disease. So any inflammatory state, pain states, arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic pain of any kind. Also, uh, states like autoimmune. So all the way from diabetes to uh, different skin issues. To anything that's considered irritable bowel, celiac disease, all the autoimmune stuff. Also, can produce heart disease. Heart disease is inflammatory. So lung issues, inflammatory. Cancer is even considered metabolic and has an inflammatory process. All the genes, all the way up to the different brain activity disorders that we're seeing. So, kids with attention deficit, right? Hyperactivity. Things like how we mentioned chronic fatigue, depression. All these different things are all related. They all come down to this systemic reaction that's going on on the cellular level. Crohn's. Crohn's. I mean, that's an autoimmune digestive issue. There's, there's, there's all sorts of anything that's not acute, anything that's not an accident or an incident that happened right now. It's crime. And so we want to figure out how to make more of the million dollar. Yeah. It, this is two sides of the same coin. You know how it's made. You stop doing. It. You know how this inflammation is going. You stop doing that, and then you have it. And how to reverse it? You start doing that. You're almost done there. With the final. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I like the recap sometimes. Okay. Was that was that clear? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. And then we talked about the two fuels because that's the number one driver of the state. You're in chronic sugar burning mode. Like almost every American out there, for five, ten, fifteen, twenty, however many years. This is in full swing. We, we can assume that, right? And so one of the first steps when you get to the bit is switching that over. All leads down to here. This is where we get to. This is the brain. This is the brain stem. The spine. It's down like this. Okay? The brain and brain stem, this section of the spine controls the parasympathetic nervous system. So does the piece down here, parasympathetic nervous system. The tone, this all comes down to tone. Which tone is dominant? Are you in, chronically in the stress side? Or are you on the healing side? Because you can't be both. This is what controls it. There's a lot of studies out there that are coming more and more all the time that show that distortions in the spine, in this region affecting the area of the nervous system that, that influences, controls that tone, can increase this entire process. No matter where you are in this process downstream, it won't work right when that's out of whack. When that when that's going on. So we gotta we work on that for three reasons. One, two, three. One is it decreases inflammation. I know that this region because of the healing element of the parasympathetic ones activated you start to decrease inflammation. It calm the system down. You down regulate a lot of this that's going on. Number two is that it uh, controls a lot of the blood flow to the brain. The big reason that that's important is there is an encasement around your brain underneath your skull that holds a fluid in it. And that fluid brings nutrients and blood flow in and allows your brain to operate. And that brain, depending on whether it's got the right blood flow and the right pressure for that will can keep you in one of these states because if it's being squeezed off if it's not getting what it needs if you can't get the nutrition through that or you can't get the blood that it needs then it keeps you in sympathetic and this area here is one of the keys to that okay and then the the last one is the overall biomechanics 
we need to have the entire spine working to pump that system in there. The point is here, this comes down, these all become interrelated. Right through there. Okay. This is a master control system. This can control, help control what tone you are. you in the sympathetic, uh, stressed out tone? Are you in the parasympathetic healing tone? That affects how your hormones get balanced. Is, if you have cortisol issues or insulin 